This is solving quadratic equations by graphing. A quadratic equation is a nonlinear equation that can be written in the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where the constant a cannot be equal to zero. To solve quadratic equations by graphing, we follow three easy steps. First, we write the equation in standard form equal to zero. Then we graph the related function of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When looking at this graph, we want to find the x-intercepts, if there are any. X-intercepts are the solutions for our quadratic equation when it is set equal to zero. So let's try solving a quadratic equation by graphing. Here we have the quadratic equation x squared plus 2x equals 3, which set to 0 will be x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. My related equation is y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. In order to graph this one, I need to find my vertex. So I'm going to use my shortcut negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of my vertex. So I've got negative 2 over 1 times 2, or a negative 2 over 2, which gives me negative 1. So my vertex x-coordinate is negative 1. Now to find the y-coordinate, I plug this input back into my equation. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So 1 plus negative 2 gives me negative 1, minus 3 gives me negative 4. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 4. This is also, right here, my axis of symmetry. I can use that to help me graph points to find the parabola of this quadratic equation. So if I plug in 0, 0 plus 0 minus 3 is going to give me negative 3. So I'll have 0, negative 3. I'll also have negative 2, negative 3 because I have to have a symmetrical parabola. If I plug in 1, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 3 will give me 0. So I have 1, 0, and I'm going to have on this side negative 3, 0. If I plug in 2, 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 3 is going to give me 5. So I'm going to have 2, 5. And over here I'm going to have negative 4, 5. So I can draw in my parabola here. Now specifically what I'm looking for are x-intercepts. x-intercepts are basically my zeros of my equation. They're my solution when it's equal to 0. So I've got x equals negative 3, and I have x equals 1 as my x-intercepts. So these appear to be my zeros for the equation, my solutions here. So I'm going to plug them in just to make sure I didn't make any errors, and they actually are solutions to the equation. I'm going to go back to my original equation and plug them in. So I had x squared, so that's going to be negative 3 squared plus 2 times x, or 2 times negative 3, and I'm hoping for an answer of 3. This gives me 9 plus negative 6, which in fact does give me 3. So this solution checks out. Let's also try 1. 1 squared plus 2 times 1, hopefully equals 3. You get 1 plus 2, which does in fact equal 3. So both solutions check out. So both negative 3 and 1 are solutions for my quadratic equation. Let's try another one. This time, I have x squared minus 8x equals negative 16. When I set it equal to 0, I'm going to have x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. My related equation, y equals x squared minus 8x plus 16. And I have to find that vertex if I'm going to graph this guy. So I have negative, negative 8 over 2 times 1, basically 8 over 2, or 4. So the y, I'm sorry, the x coordinate of my vertex is 4. 
To get the y coordinate, I'm going to plug this input back in. 4 squared is 16. 8 times 4 is 32. So I'm doing 16 minus 32, which gives me negative 16 plus 16 is 0. So 4 comma 0 is my vertex. So here's my axis of symmetry. So I can do a few numbers on each side of my vertex here. If I plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, 8 times 3 is 24, 9 minus 24 is negative 15, plus 16 is 1. So I have 3, 1, and also 5, 1, because I want a symmetrical parabola. If I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, 8 times 2 is 16, 4 minus 16 is negative 12, plus 16 is positive 4. So 2 comma positive 4, 6 comma positive 4. And here's my parabola. Now this parabola only has one x-intercept, that x equals 4. So it looks like it only has one solution. We do want to test that solution to make sure it works. So I'm going to plug 4 into my original equation. So 4 squared minus 8 times 4, hoping for an answer of negative 16. I get 16 minus 32, which does in fact give me negative 16. So my answer checks out. Here I have negative x squared equals 2x plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. And set it equal to 0. Now, my related equation is y equals negative x squared minus 2x minus 4. I'm going to find that vertex by using negative b over 2a. So I'm going to have negative negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. So I basically get negative negative 2 over negative 2, which might as well be negative 2 over 2, or negative 1. So my vertex x coordinate is negative 1. If I plug negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is 1, but I've got this negative here, so it goes back to being negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, so it's negative 1 plus 2. I'm at 1. Minus 4 gives me negative 3. So my vertex is at negative 1 comma negative 3. This is also here my axis of symmetry. All right, so I'm going to plug in 0. If I plug 0 in here, I get negative 4. So 0, negative 4. And on the other side of my line of symmetry, I have negative 2, negative 4. If I plug in 1, I get negative 7. So I'll also have negative 3, negative 7. And it looks like our parabola never intersects the x-axis, so here I have no solution. So the number of solutions of a quadratic equation can vary. Two solutions occur if there's two x-intercepts, one solution if there's one x-intercept, and no solution if there's no x-intercept. If we take a look at this function and we're asked to find the zeros of this function, we're really being asked to find the x-intercepts, where we get an output of zero, so some number comma zero. So our x-intercepts here are at negative one, positive two, and positive three. These are also my zeros for the function. Sometimes we're trying to find x-intercepts and we can't exactly tell because it's not exactly on a um, integer. So here I see I have an x-intercept somewhere between negative 4 and negative 3 and between negative 1 and 0. So they're asking me to approximate to the nearest tenth. So I've made two charts here. Since one x-intercept was between negative 4 and negative 3, and they want me to find it to the nearest tenth, I counted by tenths, starting with negative 3.9, negative 3.8, negative 3.7, negative 3.6, all the way to negative 3.1.
all of these answers were plugged into the equation, all these inputs, and I got my list of outputs. The one that is closest to having an output of zero and being a zero of the function is negative 3.7. So it's not exactly, but it is about one of my zeros. I also did the same thing for negative one to zero. I counted by tens between negative one and zero, so negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.8, all the way to negative 0 0.1. I plugged these inputs into my equation, and the one that comes closest to having an output of zero is negative 0 0.3. So these are the zeros of my function, negative 3.7 and negative 0 0.3.